here's another episode of Godly Play. Hello everyone, my name is Matt. I am the Director of Christian Formation here at SPC. I help Alex Evangelista with our children's and youth uh, programs here. Thank you for joining us this morning to whoever who is listening. We're thankful you're here. Today, we are going to read um, from our handy God's Love Bible, Growing in God's Love Bible. We are going to read A Baby is Born, based on the story in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. I'm first going to pray, and then we're going to read their story today. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for helping us through all trials. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for giving us this breath today. Amen. So our story begins. What do you know about the day you were born? Or when you were brought home? Who was there? How did you get your name? After the angel Gabriel visited Mary to tell her the news about her baby, she and Joseph got some more news. They heard that the Roman ruler, Caesar Augustus, wanted to count all the people in the Roman Empire. Every man had to go to his hometown so that his family could be counted. Joseph's family was from Bethlehem. So Mary and Joseph left their home in Nazareth to go to Bethlehem. The trip was hard for a pregnant woman. Just imagine what it would have been like for Mary to make this trip with Joseph. While Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, they looked and they looked and looked for a place to stay. It was not easy. Many people had come to Bethlehem. Every guest room was full. At last, they found space in a room where the animals stayed. The baby was born in that room. Mary gently wrapped him in in cloths and laid him in the manger where the animals ate. This was the baby that the angel Gabriel had told her she would have. So we have a couple questions here that I'm going to read and then I'm going to answer with my answers and hopefully you're thinking about answers yourself. If Mary's baby was born in the room where the animal stayed, what sounds do you think he heard? She heard. I think she probably heard some donkeys. She more than likely heard some neighs, probably heard some sheep. And then I also think she heard some snoring from the animals. As most pictures I've seen of Jesus in the manger, it's at night. And at night, the animals are normally sleeping. But And another question is, what animals do you think were in the room where Jesus was born? Similar with the sheep. I think there were donkeys. I think maybe some goats. And I wonder if any dogs or cats were there at that time. Yeah, who knows? I wonder what animals you think were there. Mary, here's another question. Mary and Joseph had trouble finding a place to stay. Have you heard about or known people who had no home? Well, I do know certain people that have no home. And that can be one of the hardest things of... Growing up for me, growing up for a lot of my close family and friends, we always had a home, 
always had a warm place to stay. And through me thinking about it, I don't imagine myself being in the shoes of Mary and Joseph, especially while giving birth. More than likely, most people I know and that they can just go to the hospital now and take a quick drive and then they're there. So there are some people I do know without that luxury and something to be thankful for, that we have a warm place to stay, warm food. That's something to be mindful of, I think. Our last question is, what can you do to help these people? I personally think, and from my experiences, how to help people is really trying to put yourself in their shoes. So imagining if you are down on your luck and you're in that situation and imagining the framework of it is saying, one day maybe I could be here and what would I want people to do to me? And that's a big concept with the synonyms of compassion and empathy. The word empathy is trying to imagine that. Imagine you are you, and you'll never genuinely be in another person's shoes unless you borrow someone's shoes, but it's imagining in a metaphorical way what's similar to imagination and just really trying to theorize something, but really trying to think about their personal experience. And if you can do that, it really makes you wonder how to be kind to someone. What would you want if you were hurting or you just wanted help? And in thinking about that, I think a huge piece is really trying to see that even though people are different and we have differences, but at the same point, we have a lot of similarities. We all like shelter. We all like to have warm beds. We all like a home-cooked meal, some good takeout food once in a while. We all want certain things that every person should have, like something that Mary and Joseph had of during the baby being born, of especially the baby Jesus. It's no person should be in that situation or ideally be in that situation of every person should have a home. Every person should have certain basic needs like water and food. But it's being always thankful you have those things, but also trying to be kind and bless others with the blessings you have. And in return, it's trying to be kinder and nicer to people and realize we are similar as human beings. But thank you for listening to our story today. And I am going to say a prayer and then we're going to end our time today. Thank you so much for joining us for our godly play. And I hope I see you next week. Dear Lord, thank you so much for our time today. Thank you for letting us hear the story of Jesus the story of how he was born, and the story to make us think of what if we were in their shoes? How would it feel? How would it make us act? And really make us ponder that this story can really be a framework in how we treat others or think about other people. And really help people that you love feel more loved and feel heard and feel helped. But I thank you for letting us imagine today and let us imagine to really do something about this story. But thank you so much, Lord. Amen. All right. See you next week. Bye.